right, so this video has been a long time coming, but it is finally here, and I've completed the restoration of my iPod Hi-Fi. And I have to say I'm quite happy with uh, how it turned out. And in this video I'll just uh, go over the parts I've used and how I made them work together and yeah, basically show a general blueprint for making a DIY Bluetooth loudspeaker that works, that has the functionality to to charge itself basically from the wall so you don't have to charge it from USB you could just plug in a figure of eight connector in and get going right so um, yeah so inside I have a TPA 3116 which we'll be uh, seeing in the moment a CSR 8645 that does the uh, Bluetooth connection and uh, obviously we have a power monitor going on inside which is also controlled by the by the Arduino. Um, around the back, we have six 18650s in series. So this isn't the prettiest setup, but I will tidy it up and uh, also find a way to to put this on the back back panel. So right now you can close it, but you can't access the main switch, right? The main power switch, which yeah, I know makes it. Uh, the auxiliary in actually works, so I have connected it, and upon connecting it, it shuts off the Bluetooth module, and this is used for charging, and you can also turn off the battery and just run it off the mains. But I'll show you guys that uh, in a moment. Uh, first and foremost, let's uh, let's get a let's get a small sound test going, and then I'll show you the uh, the magic inside. Alright, so that's probably enough to set some copyright alarms. And uh, yeah, let's just take it to the, um, I suppose you call it the kitchen. And uh, yeah, let's plug it in. I'll show you guys what the, um, what the charging look like it looks like and so right now we're running off the there's, there's a bit of flicker so we're running off the battery and we're drawing 166 milliamps to run the amp uh, it'll briefly uh, turn itself off to conserve power and it'll just run the uh, Bluetooth module and that just happened so basically standby current is 0.5 watts and if uh, push comes to shove and the battery drains too much then it can also turn off the Bluetooth module and at that point it'll be drawing about 0.2 watts I think which yeah you can forget about it for quite a while and um, in any case the uh, protection circuitry in the back is supposed to turn it off but in case it doesn't right, why not um, yeah so we have the current draw the pack voltage and the watts so let's plug it in and you should see a negative uh, negative current since the battery is quite discharged, so maximum voltage is 25.2. So I plugged it in and I'm charging at about 760 milliamps. And I'm also computing the milliamps because, yeah, why the hell not? And you can see the voltage uh, creeping up. Uh, what you could do though, if you just want to run it off the, off the mains for an extended period of time, and you probably don't want to have the batteries fully charged when you're storing them, could just turn the pack off in which case it'll go to no battery mode um, I'm not showing anything about the the watts because I can't I would need another power monitor but I am showing the milliamps this is basically the bias of the chip I'm uh, the power monitor and chip I'm, I'm guessing there shouldn't really be any any current flowing but just in case something does happen and current is flowing then um, I, I'm displaying this. I might turn it off. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, also to note, at the end of the charge, uh, I am disconnecting the battery. So I'll show you guys how the schematic looks in a bit. And uh, I have a relay that basically disconnects the, the battery, stops it from being charged. So you could leave this plugged in and the battery connected and it still wouldn't Mm. Overcharge it shouldn't because again I do have two protection systems 
in place, but in any case, right, this would be a third one. So coming right up, I'll uh, show you guys the um, theory of operation and the schematic of the power distribution circuitry. But yeah, first I'll have to set up the camera properly. All right, so let's talk about the power distribution system. So the aim of this system is to be as easy to use as possible, so we'll have the main switch on the back, but you're not supposed to know how you're supposed to switch or anything. You can't fuck it up, basically. So, and I also want it to be operational from the mains, so that I don't have to only run it off the battery, right, and continuously charge it and discharge it if I'm, uh, if I'm at home. So, yeah, basically we have, let's, let's just ignore the, the main section first. So we have the battery pack and this is, as I've said, six uh, cells in series. Um, and there's obviously some protection circuitry in between and also a balancing circuit. So actually let's show you guys that right quick. So this on the back that is visible is the uh, balancing circuit. Uh, Forget the paper tape, uh, I'm going to take that off and make it look nice. And be below that is the, so the thing that it's connected to is the uh, protection circuit. Again, I'll add links to all these parts in the, in the description. Um, yeah, so basically then it goes to a, to a switch, goes through the power monitor, right, and the power monitor, oh, I should actually. Right, the power monitor does want a feed from the plus so that it can tell the voltage. Let's just draw it like that. Um, exactly, and then again, you could ignore this diode. Right, it goes to a capacitor, and this is basically the main capacitor for the amplifier. I didn't want to want it to be on the amplifier because then I would have been switching 24 volts or 25 volts at the in the worst case into a huge capacitor basically and already with barely no bulk capacitance on this so I've stripped the main input capacitor on the amp and still sometimes actually for the past three weeks I haven't had it happen but at the beginning it did happen the relay would stick and I even have a routine in the in the Arduino that checks whether or not the relay is stuck or not and then continues to try to free it up it turns it on and off real quick until it frees itself up. So that's why this capacitor is is shifted uh, over here, and it's just a thousand uh, microfarads. Uh, the The current draw is very small, so I'm using uh, solid core wire, but that's I think one millimeter in, in diameter, so very small wire. I'm never having more than 400 milliamps go into the amp. Um, these are pretty. It's a pretty small speaker, right? So. I never have more than 10 watts going to it, right? So at 24 volts, that would be 500 milliamps, less even. Um, then I'm going into two buck converters. Uh, they call them tiny bucks because they are very small. So uh, let me see if I can get one. All right, found them. So there's two, there's many kinds you can get online and this is very important. So this one to the right I got from Banggood and is a piece of shit. So first of all, it doesn't go up to 25 volts. I think it goes up to 20. And if you feed 19 volts into it, it basically fries itself up. So the inductor gets warm, the chip get, gets warm. And even at 12 volts, it has quite a high quiescent current. I think it has like 5 milliamps or some shit. Um, however, so toss this aside, this is more or less useless. However, this over here is a piece of gold. So it looks like this. It has this on the back. And, uh... and right, the main characteristic of the, the good ones is that they have this small package. Uh, this one has four pins. There's some that have three pins on each side. So six pins, this one has eight. Both are fine, but this one is even better because this one has an enable pin, which I found to be golden in, in this uh, use case. Uh, this one you can feed up to 30 volts in, I think, and at 25 volts, I think it has 0.1 milliamps quiescent current, or even less, so 0.005 or some shit, I don't know, it, it's basically nothing, so it's insanely efficient, and highly recommended. So you can get a batch of five for about, like, eight bucks, five bucks, I don't know. Oh, again, link everything in the description. So I have two of these. Uh, the one for the Arduino doesn't have any enable pin because... It has to be always on, right? So this controls the whole show, so it's never going to be off. 
and I'm um, setting it to 4.2 volts right this is how how much would get to it after the the protection diode from the USB so even if you plug it into USB the Arduino gets sees 4.2 volts so eh, why not um, and then I have another buck converter that this time outputs 12 volts so you could also get a C uh, CSR board with uh, so you could also get one of these boards that has a 5 a 5 volt um, isolation transformer DC to DC converter but uh, it's quite common to see the 12 volt ones and this is very important otherwise you get uh, get a lot of ground loop noise so I basically am connecting the, the grounds of the CSR to the Arduino otherwise I can't uh, see when the LED is blinking and this will become uh, more apparent later on uh, when we'll discuss the software so actually I'm, I'm probably gonna gonna set the set a separate video for the make a separate video for the software that's running on the Arduino so let me know if you guys want that in the description I don't know how many people are interested in actually recreating all of this um, but in any case so to know when to turn on the amp basically I need to know when the CSR is outputting music is is playing is in the playing mode and if you guys have played with these you'll know they have two LEDs uh, one of them will blink one of them can basically tell you the mode that the chip is in that the Bluetooth chip is in so I have a wire that's going from that LED to the Arduino and I'm listening and seeing how fast it blinks and based on that I can know whether it's uh, searching so when it's uh, going from one LED to the other really quick when it's connected I think it blinks twice and then waits a bit and then blinks twice really quick and when it's playing I think it blinks long twice and then stops and then blinks long twice and then stops and then with that I know that it is playing and then I can turn the amp on so yeah that's how that's done what I started saying is the isolation transformer is high is very important otherwise you'll get a lot of garbage interference right so you, it's it's terrible if you do use it it is better right it is you can barely you do not hear it if you use it um, yet still I am using the I am somehow circumventing the the grounds because the um, so the audio ground goes to the TPA amp which is partially connected I think it is fully connected to the to the negative here but it still doesn't create a ground loop so it's fine right but anyway so enough of that that is how the uh, power works ah, okay and the uh, charging so for the charging I need a system that can basically charge the battery until it's reached a certain voltage and then I have a lot of uh, resistors in the um, balancing circuit which will basically kick in at some point all of them and will draw around I think 250 milliamps 240 something like that um, and those kick in way earlier than the uh, protection circuitry so it'll never have the chance to completely sever the battery itself and if I wouldn't have any of this and I'll just I would just connect the uh, the power supply I would be just burning 250 milliamps into the protection circuitry and having that always be at 80 degrees which is suboptimal to say the least so what I'm doing here is I have this diode which you can imagine like a one-way valve I don't know the people that are watching at this point will know what a diode is I'm not supposed to explain it in any case right so but I'm quite proud of this so when charging is on and this is the off state of the relay so it's normally normally closed the normally closed connection goes here and so at this point current can go through the entire amp and through the uh, through the um, charge circuitry and uh, yeah so when we're done charging when we notice that only 250 milliamps I, I forget what the exact rule is so when we notice that less than 250 milliamps let's say are flowing then we'll just go into a different mode and I'll show you how that is decided on the next page and I basically energize this relay and we are burning about 30 milliamps but no one cares right we are running off the mains and at this point we'll just be feeding uh, power to the amp circuit so none will be flowing the other way to the to the battery and yeah it works quite quite nice and I do need a um, a power supply that is less than 16 volts or less than 15 volts or whatever the minimum allowed voltage of the pack is because otherwise I couldn't uh, current control it 
at 12.5 is, is very fine. I found this at the flea market. It's a, um, I think UMEC charger was very well made. So a lot of power, 25 watts or thereabouts. And then I'm feeding this into a current control booster. Again, links in the description, great part. And I've set it to about 700 milliamps. I don't know, you, you saw it. It was about like 600 something, 700 milliamps so that I don't, again, overload the circuit. Uh, the amp, however loud it'll play, it'll never draw more than 700 milliamps, definitely. So even at full load, even if I'm playing a sine wave, which very rarely happens, but again, uh, then it would still leave 200 milliamps or thereabout, or even more, going to the battery, charging it up. And uh, yeah, so this is more than the more than the pack voltage, so that it'll always have something to to put through the battery, and at some point we'll just turn it off. I think that is pretty much all with this, so let's go to the next page, and this is the, basically the theory of operation. Forget this part for the moment. Uh, yeah, so basically the, the part that controls the amplifier, whether it's on or off, and again, we do need to do this in order to save ourselves about 3 watts of power, right? So I'm drawing 24 milliamps with the amp off, and let's see how much with it on. And with the amplifier on, with it not doing absolutely anything, I'm drawing another 150 milliamps. So yeah, 3.2, 3.3 watts or thereabout would be pissed away if I would always leave it on. And yeah, so basically this, this is uh, dependent on the states of the Bluetooth, which again, I can show you guys in the software and I've done a previous video on it. It's pretty much the same thing. Um, yeah, so state zero, the amp would be off, uh, the Bluetooth would be booting, so this would be the first start, the, the reset state. Um, and yeah, at some point we would see if the Bluetooth is searching. If it is searching, then we go into this state and we bl blink the blue LED on the front to show that it is searching, right? Actually, I didn't know that this had a blue LED, so the Apple speaker never uses the red, so it all, uh, the blue. Always uses red and uh, and green, so I was quite pleased to, to find a blue there. Uh, again, Bluetooth is connected. We go to another state where the LED is solid blue, as it is now. So now we're in state two, and if we're playing, uh, we go into state three where the amp is on, um, and the LED would be solid green. In this third state. Uh, the amp is on and it is the only state where the amp is on. The other ones are basically just to change the colors of the LED. Um, but also in this state we would get if the auxiliary would be plugged in. So let me right quick bring an aux cable in and see if it, see if that still works. Alright, so I actually rewrote the entire code for this and didn't test this out, so let's see. Yeah, it does work. Very nice. So let's plug that in again. And this also turns off the Bluetooth module, so yeah. Alright, so it still works. Quite surprising. Alright. And um, that is pretty much it. So when the AUX is connected, we turn the amp on, the Bluetooth off. Otherwise, pretty much all of that, and this is a bit simplified, so we go back from this third state to the other ones depending on how the Bluetooth module is, what state the Bluetooth module is in, basically. Um, and then I made another small state machine uh, for the charging. So originally, uh, the reset state is with the charge on, basically, so the relay deactivated, de-energized. And um, yeah, so if we have a low current draw that is negative, so negative but low current draw, we'll turn it off. The charge, but again, the relay, we would be turning on. Um, again, if behind our backs, the, the battery voltage, actually this is not, not correct because we cannot monitor the bar battery voltage when the charge is, is off. Um, but when the power would be disconnected, we would again de-energize this relay and not piss away power. Um, again, this is also not possible, so I'm very unprepared for this video. 
And uh, what also happens is this is basically a software protection. So if the um, uh, lithium ion uh, protection circuitry doesn't work for some reason, um, if we detect bus voltage, so the pack voltage be of below 16 volts, then we go into, into this uh, low battery, low power mode, where we turn off the Bluetooth, we turn off the amp, we turn off all the relays, and we're using about, uh, who knows, like 10 milliamps or some shit. So only the Arduino is running and blinking the LED frantically, right, trying to ask for help. And yeah, that is pretty much all. I also have a little bomb over here so comes about to about 80 bucks so I'll, I won't go over this you can just pause it and, and check it out these are the rough prices and uh, again as I mentioned I'll uh, link these in the description so without further ado let's uh, tear this shit apart <coughs> let's turn it off first now also a word of caution uh, this has been a project that is ongoing for that has been ongoing for about six months by now i think so half a year i've been working on this and i kept constantly adding stuff to it and redoing stuff so it is quite messy inside so it is basically the definition of a clusterfuck of wires which yeah i don't know if i would start it over i it would be a lot neater but yeah it is what it is. I just want you guys to be prepared. Ta-da! So this will be the LED connection. Alright, so this is the uh, the front plate that has the uh, housings for the mid-range speakers. And yeah, so let's uh, let's get to it. I've uh, constructed a um, a little base stand type of thing for the uh, for the TPA amp, and this sits in in four four screw point so this is where the actual uh, original module power module and amplifier module and the original lamp would sit and I found some screws that fit perfectly or I, the screws were there I'm not sure um, anyhow over here we have the Arduino that I've stuck very unprofessionally to the to the top of the of the unit so this location is optimal because you can actually plug in a USB and program it without taking out the whole thing because you saw you had to disconnect all the all the wires so you could just lift the subwoofer out plug yourself in program it put it back in so that's that's what that is and over here we have the uh, CSR module and um, this would be the uh, buck converter for the CSR module and this would be the buck converter for the lighting is terrible here. This would be the uh, buck converter for the uh, for the Arduino. I mean, it is a bit of a different module. This one this one doesn't have uh, an enable pin, but apart from that, it is the same. This is the main capacitor, and this is the relay that um, turns off the turns off the amp. So yeah, let's go further. All right, so yeah, down here, there's nothing much to see. Let's get this into focus again. Um, I just uh, created a, actually this didn't have the original, um, how do you call it, figure of eight. Oh, I forgot how, how it's called. Uh, but that mains connector, I didn't have it and I had to supply my own and that was pretty difficult and I filled it with um, silicone so it's, pretty watertight it's pretty airtight um, here's the main connections going to the uh, 12 volt supply I was talking about apart from that we have a sense pin for the aux that tells us whether the aux cable is connected or not and the actual audio cable from the coming from the aux so let's put this back in and yeah this is the amp I've done a very short review on it I've ran some Kapton tape on this, right, just for good measure. 
I've obviously signed myself for future generations. And yeah, so ran some nuts in between. Sits really nicely. I'm quite proud of how this turned out. 0.7 mill millimeter sheet worked uh, worked just fine for this. Uh, just core it a bit with the cutter, and then you can get this very these very sharp bends. Obviously, it didn't measure perfectly, so it has this this bit of an angle, but it's still very solid and should be fine. Uh, below this, we have the um, the power section, which is quite quite mangled here. So you have the solid core wire doing all the doing all the power transportation. So below here we have this um, 12 volt, uh, 12.5 volt uh, supply that I was talking about. So I actually ran some uh, sanitary silicone over the top to kind of pot it and not have any mains components visible. And then I've used a different kind that was way more expensive and I'm hoping is uh, way more better to actually stick it in and then I did the same for the uh, buck, uh, for the, uh, sorry, for the booster circuit module. It's the one with the big inductor. And then the relay is actually stuck down with hot snot so I can uh, take it apart, uh, remove it a bit, bit more easy, easily. And yeah, that is pretty much it. You can see how the two taps off the relay go to the diode. And yeah, that is pretty much all. So this is already going along for half an hour. So yeah, I'll let you guys get to it. Uh, let me know if you want the want a video on the on the software that's running on it. And apart from that, yeah, thanks for watching and have a good one.